Greetings, my name is VJ Nayer and I'm going to give a basic introduction to the funnel system for business people. So what is funnel? In a nutshell, funnel is a software system that can be purchased as a service or licensed for on-premise use. What does it do? It's built to handle high volumes of data updates and, and provide SQL-like queries in real time. And it's optimized for short-lived, frequently changing data. It's inexpensive to operate and license, and it easily integrates into existing software systems. So Funnel is targeted at certain types of businesses that handle lots of real-time data updates and are looking to either scale their operation or cut their cost. So this includes businesses like ride-hailing, um, where there's a lot of updates coming from taxi cab drivers and there's a lot of queries coming from customers people who want to get a ride micro mobility companies these are companies where the updates are coming from devices that are in the in the um, micro mobility scooters vehicles and cars themselves and then of course the queries also come from customers who are looking to um, to use them and then tours expositions and conventions this is another use case. This can be situations where you have large crowds of people who are looking for events and it allows you to like a tour guide or an event planner to basically plot the information on the map that's updated in real time that people can actually see or they can post messages and see them in like a geographic way. And it's also useful for things like military and security companies where you may have multiple um, security workers or military personnel who are trying to track targets or they spot targets that are of interest. So to make this a little more detailed, let's take uh, an example company which we'll talk about a little bit more. We're going to call this company MoosterTaxi.com and they have a simple business model. They have two types of users. There's the customer which has their own app to call a taxi and then there's the drivers which have their own version of the app and they're looking for customers to transport now customers search for taxis based on ever-changing data so there's um, the not only is the position of the taxi drivers um, constantly changing but the needs of the customers and the business is constantly changing maybe there's programs that allow business cars and economy cars maybe there's programs that put limits on the languages that the driver can speak or um, the location in which they operate, um, that kind of stuff. Then of course in this company the customer requests per second are in the hundreds and still growing. The, dr the drivers, their app is emitting a, a taxi update which includes a new position and other information every 10 seconds and so the load is picking up because it doesn't take very many drivers to have a pretty strong load which becomes a burden on the system. For example, 10,000 drivers are updating once every 10 seconds is already a thousand updates per second, which is a lot of update and load, especially if you're using a traditional solution based on databases. And then the customer request, they're irregular. They come in peaks and valleys. Maybe um, Friday night, there's a huge spike of requests coming in, as an example. So this is the, these are the kinds of problems that Mooster Taxi is facing. So let's talk a little bit about the company and their tech evolution and what happened inside of them. So when their system started, everything was simple. They were able to update, um, add new features be, um, without any real problem. But then complexity slowly grew, bit by bit by bit. There was new customer requests for new features, and the system had to be changed and improved incrementally as the load got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, a big overhaul of the system was never really done. Incremental changes were permitted, but huge like closing of the system for big maintenance work was never done because there was release timetables to keep track of. Your competition doesn't stop. The engineering cost to basically rebuild the system completely was extremely high and in both people and time. And then the cost of the infrastructure to rebuild and re, um, have multiple environments running was also another pressure. So they've been under a high load, they've been keeping up, but they're struggling. Getting even more into detail, what did Mooster Taxi's backend systems actually look like? How did the system change? They could have started with an initial prototype based on a simple relational database. A taxi update comes in, it's updated in the database, you query from the database. They soon started noticing that the number of customer queries was becoming too high, so they had to modify their system. 
they still have that relational database, but then they added read replicas, such to distribute the load. The other problem, though, is that with read replicas, you still only have one write master. So soon they ran into limits on how much data they could write the more taxi drivers they had. So they had to change their system yet again, and they had to shard their relational database, splitting up the data, perhaps by location, perhaps on a, on a random splitting of the driver IDs. Then, of course, this complicated the way in which you read data, because when you read data, um, you have to account for all the data that may be relevant across all the shards, potentially. And as their load continued to grow, their system became more and more complex. Intermediate caching layers were introduced. Streaming batch systems were introduced. You have read replicas. You have um, perhaps Redis clusters or elastic cache systems. And the system complexity just grew and grew and grew. And so, too, did the cost of maintaining this system. And once you actually have these systems all load balanced to meet this high amount of load, the cost can actually get quite high. And this is basically what it, the problems of a business boil down to. Time, people, and money. As the system complexity increases, the cost um, that this has takes many forms. There's the direct infrastructure cost for computers and cloud resources. The nice thing about cloud computing is that it's very easy to set up infrastructure. You don't have to get or install your own machines. The problem is it's very easy to run up the bill very quickly as systems require a lot of computational load. Not only that, but to figure out how to make these systems and maintain these systems, you actually have to hire people. And these people aren't cheap. The salaries can be quite high. Not only do you have to have top talent to actually build these systems and figure it out, you still need engineers just to maintain these systems after they build and deal with problems that come up related to load and other things. Um, and moreover, all the time, the months and the years that have been spent developing these things to help expand your ability to cope with load, it's an opportunity cost. This time could have been spent developing new features or, or kind of entering new markets or any number of other things that the business has wanted to do. So why do these systems get so complicated like this? Mooster Taxi is not an isolated incident. Many real-time data companies are facing the same problem. And Part of the reason why these software systems have to get so complicated is they're working around inherent limitations of the systems that they're built on. Most of these systems are built on two major types of software solutions. Relational databases like MSSQL, MySQL, and Postgres, and then memory cache systems like Memcache or Redis or ElastiCache. And these systems are very good for what they were built for, but they weren't built to solve every single problem. So relational databases were kind of originally designed in like the 70s and 80s, and they were basically built to keep track of highly connected data that's related in unexpected ways, and it gives you really great query flexibility. This is something that you cannot really beat them on. However, um, they're also built to keep that data on disk and even keep it safe in the event of a powder outage. But they pay a price for this, and especially when it comes to updating that data and writing it, they can start to suffer once the performance reaches beyond a certain limit. This is where the cache systems are brought in to help uh, compensate for some of the problems of a database system. The cache systems are built to operate typically in memory, although they often save the disk in the form of snapshots and logs like Redis does, so they do have good data um, retention and they have excellent performance because they basically are a key value thing. You give the ID of the driver, you get back all the data about him. However, what they are suffering is the ability to have flexible queries because when you save that data, you had to save that data under a fixed ID and that ID doesn't necessarily match the query that your customer actually entered. Perhaps the information your query, your customer is looking for didn't exist at the time that your cache was set up. So your cache was set up under driver ID, but now you have customers that are searching for uh, what rewards program is that cab part of. So how does Funnel fit into this picture? What can it do to help? So Funnel is a little bit different. It was built specifically to handle these real-time problems, it was, and it's a, it's a distributed architecture. It's a network native system that's actually built with the high amounts of network load in mind from the very beginning, and it's built very efficiently. It's built using kind of direct to machine compiled code, which gives very good performance results. 
It gives flexible queries like an SQL system, and it's very easily configurable using JSON data formats. What it basically does is it tries to achieve that marriage of good queries and high performance, but the way it does this is because the persistence of data and the long-term storage of data is treated as kind of as a second class compared to the primary purpose of querying real-time current data. Now, this doesn't mean it's unable to do this, but this data, the archival data, is sent off to the side that you can basically record in a side channel, but the system is really built for keeping up with your real-time data needs cheaply. So how would Funnel integrate into your system? The general flow of information of the Funnel system is you start off by defining your data format. There's an open source format called Apache Avro which you can use and it's just a JSON document. So you describe basically what does your data look like. You, in fact, there's a chances are very high that your data is being transmitted in JSON already and the conversion is a trivial thing to do. The next thing you do is when you create a final account you get a secure uh, access token that you use to access the system. This is to prevent other people from basically using your license and getting access to your data. Um, and at this point, the data sources, in this case could be taxi drivers or it could be whatever else you have, they can just start emitting data immediately and start uploading it. That's all you needed to do was upload your schema and it's ready to go. And then other systems like your customer app or anything like that, they can start submitting queries that look very much like SQL and it starts working immediately. So the integration is actually quite easy. So what kind of queries can it be done? Um, it looks very similar to SQL or Cubana. So here's a simple query on a single attribute of your data. Driver ID is equal to three. Simple enough, it's pretty clear what that does. Then, because the system is actually built with geographic location in mind, it has this special clause called within. And I could say within two kilometers of this latitude longitude coordinate. In this case, it does a geographic search um, and, and gives you all the data. In this case, you have you can combine queries. In this case, I say car type is equal to business and rating is greater than 3.5. So this means both conditions have to be satisfied. Then we have this query down below, which is even more uh, complicated. Let's break it up into pieces. One, you can use parentheses. You can change the order of operations to anything you want. And you can basically have subqueries like this. And in this case, we're using or, which means one or the other condition can be satisfied. So we say rating is greater than 3.5 or the car type is a premium car, one or the other. But in this case, we say combine it with the car type is equal to business. You can reorder the order of evaluation and you can combine queries in very complex ways to get results. So how would Funnel integrate into my system deployment? Well, you basically have two methods of using Funnel. There's the software as a service method. This is the simplest one to get started with. And in this case, Funnel Labs hosts your service. You get credentials to log in and then you just enter them. You're able to get a JWT token for your systems to access Funnel and you're good to go. That's it. The other option is self-hosted deployment. With self-hosted deployment, Funnel lives in your system and you obtain a license to be able to operate it and Funnel integrates into uh, your cloud infrastructure, whether it be AWS, Google Cloud Compute, or whatever you have. This has a few advantages because certain parts of Funnel can be disabled when this happens. So if your company is taking care of the secure access to the Funnel system, then you can skip the logic that has to do with JWT tokens and authorization, and you can actually squeeze out higher performance for less resources if you host it yourself. All right, so let's answer a few questions that come up about Funnel just to get things clear. So is Funnel applicable to my business? Funnel is made for businesses that deal with real-time data. So if you answer yes to these conditions, Funnel might be of help to you. So do you have high volumes of data that's constantly changing? Do you have high volumes of user-driven requests on that data? Do you have a DB back solution and is it struggling under high load? And have your infrastructure costs started growing to the point over, for example, $10,000 uh, US dollars per month. If these conditions describe your business, Funnel might be right for your business. Um, can I speak to a person to ask more detailed questions? Of course. You can actually schedule a link, uh, a schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting using Calendly. 
and you can ask any question you want in private. Does Funnel is missing this feature X? Will it have it? Funnel is not written in stone, it's software and it can be easily modified. So if you have an, a good idea for a feature that you want, just send an email to contact at funnellabs.io. Does Funnel save data updates permanently? No, Funnel is not a database in the, in the traditional sense. However, it does have the way of making um, this data available for archival purposes. It can be a limited window of raw data available, maybe the last weeks of data, depending on how you want to configure it. Or you can set up a destination to have the data pushed to. It could be a publicly exposed endpoint for your Kafka cluster, or it could be some other mechanism. Um, if you have a specific uh, request for how you want data to be exported, maybe archived to S3 or something like that, uh, please reach out to, to contact at FunnelLabs.io and pose your request. How much does Funnel cost? The exact cost will vary with your usage rate, but a company with moderate usage can expect to pay around $1,200 US dollars per month. Now that sounds like it, it could potentially sound like a lot, but actually what it's doing is it's saving a lot of money for your company. So depending on the state of your company and its system, what Funnel is essentially doing is replacing the need for roughly four to eight engineers doing maintenance on a system, and as well as infrastructure costs, which normally under the t traditional implementations cost between ten and a hundred thousand U.S. dollars per month. So the cost of Funnel typically represents around 1 to 2 percent of the savings that your company gets. I have a different problem. Can Funnel help? So this is a, one, a question I receive often where someone has a, a performance related problem or a cost related problem that's somewhat vaguely connected to Funnel but not exactly there. Um, the answer to that is that the Funnel system simply does what it does. It's, it's an efficient real-time data management solution. However, the company, FunnelLabs.io, also does do consulting work with a focus on high-performance software. If you have a request for a, a different project or something custom for your company that you want completed via consulting work, just reach out to contact at FunnelLabs.io. So I just want to thank you for your time. The company is FunnelLabs.io. You can ask con uh, questions at contact at FunnelLabs.io or visit our website at https funnel-labs.io. Have a good day.